Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Amen. This is a homegoing service. Amen. And we come to lift up the name of Jesus all at the same time. Amen. And so giving an honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is certainly the head of my life and to this beautiful family. Amen. Uh, we've already had preludes, so we're going to go right into the program. We're going to have the hymn of comfort by the Holy Trinity Community Church Combined Choir at this time. Afterwards, we have the reading of the Old Testament scripture by yours truly, and the New Testament scripture will be read, read by Bishop Samuel T. Stylings of Grace Church of Elizabeth City, and the prayer of comfort by Reverend Antonio Williams from the Cornerstone Missionary Baptist Church in that order. Amen. Amen. Can we celebrate the Lord at this time? Amen. Amen. As they come today. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Testament Street will come from the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter, in the 28th and 31st verse. The word of God reads this wise. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those that have no might. He increases strength, but those that wait on the Lord shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. I'll be reading the New Testament scripture from the last book of the Bible, which is the book of Revelation. Praise God. It says, Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. 
And it says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared for a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. The word of God for the people of God. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Hey, man, praise God, family. Um, I know it's a challenging time. We know that it's a challenging time, but I will tell you that um, there are some witnesses here that can testify to the fact that God will bring you out. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, God, your scripture tells us to give thanks in all things. And God, because we've tried it, we understand the power in it. So, God, right now, we just take a moment to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Because we understand now, God, that you are a phenomenal God. Yeah. When things are going perfect, you're a phenomenal God. When they're messed up, you're a phenomenal God. Yeah. When we can understand it, when we can't understand it, you're still a phenomenal God. Yeah. So, God, we, we come to you now, God, as family and friends, as a, as a local body, God, because... The family needs you. We need you, God. And we just pray that you would, first off, that you would be everything that they need yeah. during this time. Yeah. God, we pray that not only would you be what they need, but that you would meet the need, that you would be their strength, that you would strengthen them, that if there's anything that's not put together during this service now, God, that you would restore it. Yeah. So, God, we, we come to you now, God, asking that you would comfort this family during this loss in Jesus' name. God, we pray that this family is able to sense a peace that people can't understand. God, that this family is able to sense the fact that you're with them, that you're not going to leave them, that you're not going to forsake them. And God, we also pray, God, that during this service, God, we pray that you would use the man of God to communicate the word of God that could forever change our lives. God, even in the service, God, we take a moment because we, we want to celebrate the fact of all of these years that you've allowed Miss Reed to be on this earth. God, anytime we get together, we understand the need to praise and worship you because we see that people are leaving here every day. So, God, while we still have breath in our body, God, we're being intentional about praising and worshiping you regardless of the situation that we find ourselves in. So God, we thank you for it. We speak peace in Jesus' name. We speak that this would just be a phenomenal homegrown celebration where God is magnified in Jesus' name. God, we even pray that you would meet the needs that people can't even see in Jesus' name. And God, as I begin to conclude this, God, we pray that everyone under the sound of my voice would be open to hearing and receiving the word of God. We thank you for this celebration in advance, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you.
Amen. Amen. We certainly thank uh, Minister Titus, Bishop Titus, and we certainly thank uh, Pastor Antonio Williams. Amen. Uh, and at this time, we will ask uh, Miss Kimberly Respus would come and give us the acknowledgments and also the uh, reading of the church resolutions at this time. Amen. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning, clergy, family, and friends. We the family have received numerous cards, telephone calls, text messages, emails, and visits, and we say thank you. The family has selected the following cards to be read. A mother's love is forever. Asking God to gently comfort you, strengthen you for the days ahead, and remind you of how much you're loved. With love and prayers, Elizabeth ECAC Delta Sigma Theta Social Action and Political Awareness Committee, Addie W. Griffin, Chairperson. <laughs> Angela and family. Praying God will comfort and care for you while you celebrate the legacy that lives on with sympathy, Melba Perkett and the Perkett family. We are with you in your loss. May the light of your mom's love for you all and her precious memories bring you all peace. God and time is the best healer. Our thoughts are with you. Lean on your friends for support at this time. After all, that's what friendship is for. Look to sweet me memories for comfort and peace when your pain is too big to ignore. Let yourself have the permission and the time for whatever you may need to do. Meanwhile, please know many warm, Karen's thoughts are sent with compassion to you. Sincerely, with love, members of the Elizabeth City Alumni Chapter, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Letter of Comfort, Holy Trinity Community Church, Bishop Mac Freshwater Pastor, to Angela Reed Griffin and the family of Geraldine Respice Reed. Jesus promised to be with his followers always, including in this time of sorrow, Matthew 28, 20. The word of God tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes that there is a time for everything. Your loved one, Geraldine, has now experienced that time to die while you are experiencing the time of weeping. No matter what time occurs in our lives, we have the comfort of knowing that God is with us always. He has promised never to leave nor forsake us. So remember God's words to you, his children, in this season of your life. Geraldine was a member of Holy Trinity where she sang in the Senior Choir, the Williams Ensemble Choir, the Mass Choir, and was a member of the Women Christian Service Council. Bishop Freshwater and the Holy Trinity Community Church family extends our love and words of sympathy to you and your family. Continue to pray, look to God in the days ahead, and know in your hearts that he hears every prayer and trust him to carry you through any situation because he is able. You are in our prayers. God bless you all. 
Pastor Mac Freshwater, and the Holy Trinity Community Church family. Letter of Comfort for family of Geraldine Respis Reed, Cornerstone Missionary Baptist Church. The gospel is the good news that God is restoring our broken lives through the death and resurrect resurrection of Jesus Christ. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Second Timothy chapter four, verse seven. If we could bring you back again, if we could bring you back again for one more hour or day, we express all our unspoken love. We have countless things to say. If we could bring you back again, we'll say we treasured you and that your presence in our lives meant more than we ever knew. If we could bring you back again to tell you what we should, you know how much we miss you now, and if we could, we would. Dear Reed, Respice, and connected families, we are so sorry that the providence of God has brought you to a close the life of Geraldine Respice Reed on Friday, November the 4th, 2022, a loving mother of sister Dr. Angela Reed Griffin, Stacy, two grandsons, Stacy Griffin Jr. and Andrew Griffin, and five loving siblings. We, the members of Cornerstone Missionary Baptist Church, feel that it is befitting to express our sympathy, not only to the family and to our active church members, Sister Carol Baker and Sister Joyce Noel, sisters, Sister Toya B. Stevens, niece Eric, Trustee Colbert Respis, nephew Kim, Sister Tanya Tatum, niece, and Deaconess Sharon Lumsden, cousin, and other nieces and great nieces, nephews and great nephews, but also the Cornerstone Missionary Baptist Church family and a host of other cousins and friends. We commend to him who knoweth best and will always do right. You have our sincere prayers. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew chapter five, verse four. Family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share in your sorrow, but more importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. If we can be of any assistance in any way, please let us know. Humbly submitted on this 12th day of November, 2022, the pastor, officers, and the Cornerstone Missionary Baptist Church family, Elizabeth City, North Carolina, yours in Christ, Gloria D. Bryant, trustee chairperson, Reverend Antonio M. Williams, senior pastor. Acknowledgement. The family wishes to express our sincere thank thanks for all acts of kindness rendered during our bereavement. Your kind expression of love, friendship, and sympathy have been a comforting source of strength. We pray that God will bless each of you, the family. God bless you, and again from the family, from the bottom of our heart, we say thank you, and we love you. Amen. At this time, we see on the program that says a silent reading of the obituary. So we would take a few moments. Most of you probably have already read it, but just take a few moments and look at the obituary.
man. At this time, we have two groups. And please note in parentheses, if you don't have a program, it says, please, only two minutes. This is a family request, amen. And so we pray that if it's any way possible that you can hold your statements to two minutes. While you are preparing, uh, I just want to take this opportunity to say that I'm so grateful that I got the call from Mr. Respus uh, when she passed away. And, and I just want to stand here and uh, say uh, something that the Lord put on my spirit about Miss Reed. She was one of my teachers. And uh, it, real short, uh, just two words for you. Tough love. Amen. Tough love. And, and I'm so grateful for that because I was one of those students that was not going in the right direction. <laughs> but she showed me tough love. With that look she had, sometimes she turned to the side and gave you that look. And then she turned to the other side and gave you that beautiful smile. And the Lord put on my spirit to keep in my memories about such a great person. It's tough love. We need that more nowadays. Tough love. So please come now. First of all, the Elizabeth City Pastor Tank Public School colleagues, P.W. Moore, class of 1963. Elizabeth City State University class of 1967, Elizabeth City Housing Authority, the Community Relations and Committee, and Elizabeth City Alumni Chapter of the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated Family. In that order, if you prepare your hearts and self to come. Amen. City Paps, St. School colleagues? All right, all right. Good morning. I think this is my place, <laughs> but since I live in Elizabeth City and I've known, I knew Geraldine my, li my whole life, I, you know, could fit in anywhere. Amen. Geraldine was my friend. We, we talked some on Facebook because I always put on an encouraging message every day. I try to encourage somebody. And I tell people in a minute, I don't do drama. <laughs> Many of these young men and women in this place, we taught. And Geraldine was my teacher. She was my teacher. Because when I graduated from Elizabeth City State, most of the teachers I worked with were older than I was. So they taught me how to get along in the classroom. They, the, uh, the university could never have taught me what they taught me. When we had a bad day, we got together in the afternoon and crossed the street, and Ms. Jones would do something crazy, <laughs> and we would have to laugh and let the past go. Yes. And it seems that we are in these places so often now that it hurts, but we can have faith in yes. one thing, that everything the Lord tells us is true. Yes. I'm glad he called me to spread his word. Yes. Because he said, and if you don't believe what the Bible says, you don't preach it. Don't preach stuff that you don't believe. And he said, Amen. when this earthly tabernacle is dissolved, Amen. Glory. We've got another building, one not made by hand. 
And that's the thing that keeps me going and yes. gives me yes. comfort yes. every day. Yes. I think it was Antonio, uh, the Rev, said um, she was tough. She had a face like what my, grand, what my great grandson calls, you know, he, when he makes a statement, he says, Grandmama, your face look mad. <laughs> I say, that's because my face is mad. <laughs> she, never, she never lied on me. I don't know anybody she lied on. If she wants you to tell you something, she told you to yes. your face. Amen. And I love that about all those folk that I had to work with. And I could say so many things, but I know that we don't have enough time to do that. I will miss Jardine when I am feeling down. Sometimes it shows on my message on Facebook, and she says, God bless you. She says, God bless you. She always says something positive to make me feel better. And I thank God for her, and I thank Angela for thinking about me just to say a few words. Good morning. Good morning. It's okay to give the Lord another hand clap yes. of praise. Yes. He's worthy yes. of all of our praise. Yes, he is. My name is Clinton Price. My sisters knew the family well. In fact, I thought our address was on White Street. They stayed there so much. All of my sisters have gone to glory. Ethel, Araminta, and Lindora. I am here to represent the class of 1963, of which Geraldine was a fond member of. At this time, I will ask those who are here to stand, uh, representing the class of 1963 of P.W. Moore High School. Amen. Let's give them a hand clap of praise. Be because of our age, I'll have you to go ahead and sit down right now. <laughs> On behalf of the class of 1963, we extend our heartfelt condolence to the family, and we pray for comfort, strength, and love today and for weeks, months, and years to come. Geraldine will truly be missed by all of us. It has been said that when one goes to be with the Lord, that they are in a better place. No more sickness, no more hospital visits, no more pain, and above all, no more dying. For these things are no more. For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And in his presence, there is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. I can hardly imagine how that will be. We know that death is not the end, but the beginning of a life eternal in the heavens for those that die in the Lord. So as I close, we bid our classmate, farewell. Rest in peace, my sister, for your labor was not in vain. We will forever remember your love for one another and others, and most of all, your service and love for Almighty God. Thank you. Mississippi City State University, class of 1967. Amen. The Elizabeth City Housing Authority. Amen.
morning. I don't see anyone else from the Housing Authority. I did see Mr. Perry back there, but he didn't move, so I said, well, I'll come up. <laughs> uh, when I was employed at Housing Authority, Ms. Reed was uh, one of our board members. In fact, she was chairman of the board of uh, a Housing Authority board. And oftentimes, I would talk with her, and she spoke her mind. She told me how she felt, how she looked at it, and then she would always give me advice. A lot of times I would stop by our house to talk with her because I was in a very unthankful position when I worked at the Housing Authority. But I got through it for 30 years. <laughs> so, but I would always talk to her and I didn't have to worry about hearing again or it getting back to the director and it was negative or anything like that. And for that, I really appreciate and loved her. And even after I left, I would see her somewhere, and Angela is my witness. She will always talk to me about what I'm doing, where I'm going, what I'm going to do next, and always making suggestions to me. I love her for that as well. And then my sister, who didn't come, my sister, Dr. Jennifer Sykes, uh, worked along beside her for a couple of years. They were in the same classroom, and Jennifer just loved her, and she loved uh, Jennifer. Uh, I last talked with Miss Reed. Uh, right before Faye passed. Faye and I were very close. And she told me that she was going through some things with her health and everything. But she was always concerned about my family. What was going on with my mother, because I just lost my father. So she asked about my mother, and always concerned about my sisters and brothers, as well as all of the family there. So I just want to say that we, um, we're going to miss her. She's gone, but not forgotten. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is how to do it. A quote by Geraldine Respis Reed. <laughs> when commencing or when issues with the Elizabeth City Pascotank County Human Relations Commission, Geraldine was always first to be face to face on Zoom. I have known the Respis family all my life with Ray and Faye and Willie in my school days. Geraldine was one of Ray's older sisters, so my friend, which is Ray, introduced me to her older sister, Geraldine. Geraldine was a realist, straightforward, yeah. writer, yeah. communicator, dedicated educator, tolerant, forgiving, and an old schooler. Our commission focused on issues in our community. Yes, these topics were inspiring to Geraldine, very knowledgeable and concerned. One issue, homelessness. Geraldine would say, with all these houses boarded up and buildings, there shouldn't be no homelessness in this Amen. city. Amen. Law enforcement was her passion. Her father, Sergeant Leonard Respis, upbringing gave her many, many opportunities and examples. She would say, my dad visited neighbors. He went into the neighborhoods, and he sat on the porches, and he walked the streets. So there shouldn't be no division with the law enforcement. This is our home. Geraldine loved Elizabeth City. She built relationships. She made sure that we donated to the food bank. And she was always wanting to be the mistress of ceremonies when we had events. <laughs> she shared with members of our committee about the events in Wilmington, North Carolina. But she knew that Elizabeth City was a home home. Old school. Jordan was an old school. Yeah. All our conversations, our texts, uh, following on Facebook was about the good old days. The Epps Club, Jim Slades, walking down South Road Street. 
box of yacht. She loved talking about the old movie theater, Mr. Biscuit. You only had to pay six, have six soda pop blades to get in. She laughed, and she kept us updated on her siblings. Willie, her baby brother, she spoiled you. <laughs> to know Jardine is to love her. Yeah. She was not a bragger, but Dr. Angela Griffin, when you got your doctor, Erling Jardine was so, she loved it so much. So let's all of us give her a hand. <laughs> and our conversations was always about her family. She loved the family. And most of the time, Geraldine would tell me about her parents. She loved the parents and, and her siblings also. Her daughter, Dr. Dr. Angela Griffin Reed, took care of her mother and her father. And Geraldine often told me how she traveled from Wilmington, North Carolina to Elizabeth City. Didn't complain about gas or she was tired after being a parent a professor. Jardine loved that. She loved your beautiful home. She talked about it to me all the time. Most of the time she couldn't get service on her cell phone. She would call me about two or three times and tell me her information. I loved Jardine. I really did. Jardine always critiqued me. When I had a meeting, she would say after me, you did a good job. You had content. Amen. Our last retreat was in July. Jardine told me that her daughter was going to bring her home, uh, and she's going to stay a few weeks in her home, waiting for the retreat. But she called me, and she told me, she said, I want to bring one of my sisters. I said, which one? She said, Carol. She said, and you know what? The city don't have to pay for her food. I can pay for her food. <laughs> I love talking with Jardine. I talked with Jardine. My last conversation with Jardine, was on the 28th. We had our meeting on the 27th, and Geraldine didn't say much. She was, I called her name twice to, re, to respond, but she didn't say anything. The next day she called me and told me, said, Sheila, I wasn't feeling good, but you did a good job. She said, I'm going to rest and pray, and so I want you to do the same. I said, okay, Geraldine, I'll call you back another day. I didn't hear from Geraldine since that time. But I knew in my heart, in my spirit, that Geraldine was not feeling well. So to you today, and to her, Dr. Angela Griffin, son-in-law, Stacy Senior and Stacy Junior, Andrew, she always wanted to make sure she had her snacks for you, <laughs> her sisters and her brothers and in-laws, God's grace yeah. will kill, kill us yeah. and carry us through. Yeah. I'm going to miss Geraldine. But I know that she's resting in peace. Good morning. It's still morning. Good morning. Everyone, my name is Tricia Walton. I am the president of the Elizabeth City Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And I would like for all of the members of Delta Sigma Theta who are present today to stand, please. Amen. Thank you, Saras. Sara Geraldine Respice Reed remained true to her sacred word of honor. She loved Delta and its ideals and faithfully attempted to realize them in her daily life. As an engaged member of the Elizabeth City Alumni Chapter, Sara Reed was most visible on our Political Awareness and Social Action Committee. One of her latest contributions was to open her house to store food for a food drive. She sought to be compassionate, loving, tender-hearted, and humble-minded. She lived fully and laughed often. She appreciated the earth's beauty. She looked for the best in others and gave the best that she had. Her life was an inspiration and her memory will be a benediction. Oh, who will walk a mile with me? 
along life's merry way. A comrade, blithe and full of glee, who dares to laugh out loud and free, and let her frolic fancy play like a happy child through a flower's gay, that feel the field and fringe the way where she walks a mile with me. And who will walk a mile with me along life's weary way? A friend whose heart has eyes to see, the stars shine out o'er the darkening lee, and the quiet rest at the end of the day, a friend who knows and dares to say, the brave sweet words that cheer the way where she walks a mile with me. With such a comrade, such a friend, I fain would walk till journey's end, through summer sunshine, winter rain, and then. Farewell, Sarah Geraldine Respice Reed. We shall meet again. On behalf of the members of the Elizabeth City Alumni Chapter, we want the family of Sarah Reed to know that we will keep you in our prayers and we hope that you will keep us in yours. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. I'd like to say that I've known Jardine Reed as an aunt as well as a teacher. I can honestly say that I enjoyed the aunt more so than the teacher. It only took one time to mess up in school. All she had to do was give me that look and I'll reference the statement that Mr. Pastor Godfrey made tough love. As an aunt, she spoiled me. She would pick me up early from school. She would treat me as though I were her own child. Later, um, when Angela was born, she sort of kicked me to the curb. <laughs> but that is all right. That is my aunt. We also had a competition. Uh, we would try to see who would be the first to uh, make the best sweet potato biscuits uh, because we didn't get the recipe from my grandmother. And we tried, we have our food critics in the family, of course. Uh, it was tough. But this is the year that Jardine finally, finally conquered the recipe. She didn't share it with anyone, <laughs> but she conquered it. So on behalf of the family, I'd like to say thank you all so much for supporting us and coming here. We ask that you continue to be safe, and may God continue to bless you all. Amen. Good morning. morning. Giving honor to God that's in heaven, the clergy, family, and friends. I would like to extend my gratitude to all of you who took the time to share in this ongoing service. I am Colbert Respus. I am the nephew of Jardine. Aunt Jardine was a loving, caring, and strong-minded young lady. Her infectious smile could light up a room, whether it was telling a joke or giving words of wisdom. She loved God deeply love God. She loved family. Yes. Jardine taught me in the eighth grade at 13 years old. <laughs> me and Juwan was in the same class. Uh, Jardine uh, gave me a B plus one day. I said she gave it to me. <laughs> and um, I thought I deserved an A. See, back then you had like A pluses, A minus, and things like that. 
So all I needed was one point. And I went to her, I said, uh, you couldn't give me one point. <laughs> and she said, uh, did you earn one point? <laughs> what you told me? Did you earn one point? And I went home to my mom, I said, your sister is, is pretty mean. <laughs> she, she wouldn't give her nephew one point. But I listened to her and she told me in front of my mom, she said, in this world, Colbert, Nobody's going to give you anything. Mm -hmm. She told me. And she said, you got to earn everything that you get. Mm -hmm. And from this day on, the same message and wisdom of words she gave me, I gave to my children the same thing, that nobody's going to give you anything. Mm -hmm. Got to earn it. Got to earn it. I'll never forget that. Journey loved her family, <laughs> sisters, brothers, Angela, Chum, Stacy. She loved the family. She really did. But she always told her nephews and nieces, study hard, yes. work hard, because your mama ain't make no dummies. <laughs> she did. Amen. That's what she said. She Amen. did. Amen. I finally want to say one thing about Journey, that Journey in life was a blessing. Yes. Her memory, a treasure. Yes. She is loved beyond words and missed beyond measure. We love y'all, we thank y'all, and keep us in prayer. Thank you. Jackie Reed, uh, Geraldine were married to my brother Thomas, better known as Dink. Yes. And we didn't live we didn't live far from one another at a time. So Geraldine, she would come home after a hard day of teaching, and she would come to the house, she'd say, You open my house again today. <laughs> you see, being her husband. We had we had something we loved to do together, uh, and, and, and and that was drink. <laughs> and we did that very good. But she she was an inspiration. Yes. Don't get me wrong. She was an inspiration. Then she attend with Jackie. You going to church this Sunday? I said, Yeah. I said, I'd already thought about it. Me and Bing had already planned what we were gonna do. If <laughs> and it wasn't going to church, <laughs> but I couldn't tell Geraldine that. Geraldine was mean down. I'm gonna tell it. <laughs> I'm gonna tell it like it is. She was mean. That's why I knew Angie Boo, uh, if we call Angela Angie Boo, but that's how I knew Angela was going to be real good. She, she, she had a tight rope. Yes. You know, I'm going to tell it like it is. Yes. Yeah, I grew up with Geraldine. <laughs> she was there. And uh, I loved her so much, though. I tell you, she, she, she taught me so much. And, and that's the truth. She taught me so much. She can be well missed. I not only have two minutes, because sometimes when I get to talking, I don't know when to stop. <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to cut it short. Yeah, I'm going to cut it short. Amen. I, don't want, I don't want anybody standing up behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Laughter is good for the soul. At, at this time, uh, we would ask if any ministers or preachers that are in the house, amen, if you would stand at this time. Any ministers, amen, or any preachers in the house, amen. Amen. As we stand, I want us to think about this family and continue to lift them up in your prayers, amen. Uh, we are here for you, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. At this time, we are going to have a lection by the Holy Trinity Community 
church combined choir, and after that, we're going to have the word of God by Bishop Mac Freshwater. Pray for him also as he comes and give a word of comfort, amen, to this family, that it may lift their hearts on today, amen. And, and I want you to know, family, that my daughter, I inspired her to go to school to be a teacher because of the inspiration of such great teachers like uh, Sister Reed. And I told her, don't teach for the money. I know a lot of you don't want to hear that. Teach because you love to instill the goodness in the children, amen. And so I, I thank God she made a teacher of the year last year at White Oak Elementary School, amen. And I, I just, for the inspiration of Ms. Reed, that tough love, I'll always remember, amen. God bless you, family. Preach, Bishop. Oh, the world go free. 
choir said, I love Jesus and he loves me. I just want to know, do I have anybody here that loves Jesus? If you, if you really love the Lord, why don't you put your hands together and show God that you really love him today. you, but do you really lo love him? Hallelujah. We know that God loves us. You say, preacher, how I know God loved me? Well, John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I know God loves me. Do you love him? We do give praise and thanks to the Most High God, for he's worthy of all praises. Even in a time like this, God still deserve a praise. Yes. Truly, we give our condolences to the Respice, Reed, Griffin family. Yes. We thank God. Amen. We hear, as you look around, you can see the preachers. You can see family and friends is here to support, to share with their love and their memories. Truly, we thank God. I thank you for this opportunity to give you a word of comfort. I don't count it light, but I know it's a privilege to do so. Amen. For there are many other preachers you could have chose to do this job. But I thank God for you today. Amen. You ask me to give you some words of comfort, just give me a few minutes. I'll give you a few words of comfort, and I'll move right on out the way. Amen. Amen. Let our heart pray. Oh, gracious Father, we're here in this place. Yes, Father God, I know there's some heavy hearts, there's some yes, sad yes, hearts. Yes. Oh, God, I know there's some that have questions. Yes. But, God, you have the answers. Yes. And, God, you will reveal and you will let us know them in your time. Yes. But, God, we come to you today, God, asking that you will bless me to bless this family with words of comfort. Oh, God, words that will encourage, words that would exalt, words that would uplift, oh, God. Even behind tears and heavy hearts, God, we still can have joy. And, God, we can look to you, author and finisher of our faith. We say, Lord, have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As I began to search to find words of comfort to give to this family, I was reminded of the word that Paul spoke to the Thessalonians when there was issues and concerns they had. Yes, sir. So I will read from 1 Thessalonians 4th <laughs> chapter, 13th verse. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord yes, shall not prevent them which are asleep. Yes. For the Lord himself yes. shall yes. descend from heaven yes. with a shout, yes. hallelujah, with the voice of the archangel yes. and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 
Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together yes, sir. with them in the cloud. Thank you, Lord. Woo! To meet the Lord in the air. Yes. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Yes. But this is what Paul said. He said, Wherefore comfort, comfort. one another yes. with these words. Yes. Hallelujah. These are words of comfort. Amen. If I would have to leave a thought, a thing with you today, I would say, see you later. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When, when we use that term, see you later, mean I'll see you later or sometime in the future. Yes. Amen. So, so, so I say to the family today, you can see mama, sister, auntie later. Yes, sir. But there's some criteria that goes with that, though. You just, you just can't just see her later. God have laid out a plan for us. If we want to see mama, daddy, sister, brother in the future, we got to live according to God's will. We can't live any kind of life. We can't walk any kind of way. But we got to live according to the word of God. I'm so glad, amen, that God have given us a way so we can see our loved ones that's going on. Yes, sir. This was the issue, amen, that the Thessalonian had, yes, amen. Paul, Paul wrote this letter to the Thessalonian during his second missionary journey. He wrote this letter a short time later to encourage the young believers yes, that was there. Yes, we have young believers, amen. amen. We have young believers, amen. Sometimes young believers think they can do whatever they want to do. But God, God have laid down the law. Yes, sir. And you know what? God will have the last say. Yes. Whether you believe me or not, God will have the last say. Yes, sir. Amen. So, so, so Paul wanted the young believers, amen, to understand, amen, that God wanted them to hold on yes. to their faith. Yes. Don't be troubled or, deserve, or, or, or troubled by the things that's going on or the loss of your loved ones. Yes. Paul want them to understand, amen, that, that we have a Savior. Yes. And our Savior is Jesus Christ. Yes. See, because we believe in our Savior, Jesus Christ, yes. we have hope. Yes. Yes, sir. As the word said, amen, those that don't believe in him, they have no hope. No hope. But we that believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we have hope. Yes. Thank God for hope. Thank you. Amen. In other words, Paul, amen, wanted to encourage them. Amen. Paul wanted to comfort them. Yes. Amen. With these words. Yes. He wanted them to understand, don't have to worry about the ones that have gone on. Uh -huh. Amen. Because Jesus is coming back. Yes. The same Jesus that you believe in. Yes. He will soon come back. Yes. I remember the day of uh, uh, Pentecost, amen, in the book of Acts, amen, as the apostles stood and gazed up into the heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Preach. The word said there was a man that stood by them yes, and said, why stand you gazing up into the cloud? For the same Jesus that's going away in the cloud. He's coming back. He's coming back soon. Yes, he is. Listen. Paul challenged them yes, to please God yes. in their daily living. Yes. And I'm challenging you to do the same thing. Yes. To please God yes. in your daily living. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We have to live according to the word of God. Yes, sir. Yes. The word says every liar shall have his day. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Amen. Yes, Amen. The word tells us be not they drunkard. Uh -huh. This is God's word. Yeah. This is not Bishop Freshwater's word, yeah. but this is God's word. Yeah. And we are not citizens of this world. Yeah. Every believer are not citizens of this world. Amen. We are just strangers, yeah. just passing by, Glory. just for a little, while. a little while. And from what I hear and what I know, amen, Jardine was just passing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Didn't y'all say this was a home going? Uh, yes. 
Amen. John, John tell us, amen. John 17 and 16 tell us, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. The call of God is not of this world. But we work hard, we establish and do things real hard in this world. But we got to acknowledge and realize we're not here to stay. But God has laid out a plan. Amen. If we love Jesus, if we be followers of Jesus, we have a home that's not made by hand. Hallelujah. We got to understand, amen, that, that, that we are not here to stay. We all have lost loved ones sometime or another. But I'm so glad that God has made a plan that I can go see mama and daddy. Yeah. But I got to live right. Yes, sir. Amen. I got to live right, and I got to do right. Yeah. So what we must do in order to see our loved one, we got to be obedient to the word of God. Yeah. We got to plant our feet on a solid foundation. Yeah. And Jesus Christ is that foundation. We got to stand still and wait on the Lord. I know sometimes when we're young, we feel like we have all the time in the world. But I come to tell you, if you go out there to West Lawn, if you go out there to Old Grove, you'll find short graves as well as long graves. But one thing I do know, my mind is made up and my heart is fixed. I, I'm going to wait on the Lord. I made my mind up uh, that I'm going to hold on to, to God's unchanging hand. So my brothers and sisters, uh, I want to comfort you with these words. Don't worry about Mother Jardine because one day uh, our God going to come back. He's going to come up on a cloud. Yeah. The Bible says uh, the heaven going to roll back like a scroll. Yeah. And God going to come back oh, yeah. and he's going to blow the trumpet of the Lord. Yeah. I don't know about you. Uh, I don't know whether I'll be dead or alive. But one thing I do know, when God blow that trumpet, yeah. I hear the trumpet of the Lord. And the word let me know uh, that God uh, will stop in the middle of the air. Yeah. And those that died in the Lord, the word said they're going to come up uh, out of the grave. Uh, because God going to call them back. But one thing good about it, if you're walking around uh, on this earth, uh, the Bible said uh, that they that's walking around to meet those that died in the Lord. And they're going to come up together. And God's going to take them into the heaven. And we're going to go away, huh? good God Almighty, huh? to a place that's been made huh? by our God. Yeah. Comfort Hallelujah. one another with these words. Yeah. Amen. 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 Continue to comfort with one another with these words. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. At this time, I, I try to make it happen. Never preach behind a preacher. Amen. amen. At this time, we're going to have our closing hymn. Amen. amen. By this Holy Trinity Community Church combined choir. Amen. And let's give this great bishop a hand of applause. Amen. amen. Thank you so much for that word.
Amen, family. We know what the end is going to be. If you just keep your hands in God's unchanging hands, then everything will be all right. At this time, as we come to his close, amen, we ask the clergy to stand, the family and friends, that we will prepare. The interment will take place at the West Lawn Cemetery, amen. So at this time, we turn it to the hands of Twyford Funeral Home. 